this time, I would like to thank today's sponsors, and they are Fred's Lawn and Garden Service at 791-9025. Hi, my name is Fred Bariba. You may only know me as a Western Angler, but you may not know that I'm a Vietnam vet and a disabled vet. I have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer due to exposure from Agent Orange when I was stationed in Vietnam. When I applied for my veterans' compensation, things were going really slow. That's when I found out about an organization in Fremont that's founded by Mark Otovich called 1AA Win-Win Opportunities. This organization is a non-profit organization and is located right here in Fremont. Not only help me and will help other vets, 1AA Win-Win Opportunities will also help the homeless and the jobless. The homeless with temporary housing and the jobless with job skills to get back in the job market. 1AAA Win-Win Opportunities will also help people break their habits with drugs, alcohol, and smoking. If you own a business and you can help with job placement, or if you can volunteer your time, or you can help with fundraising, please call 1AAA Win-Win Opportunities at 510-794-1430. Thanks. Your donation is really needed to keep this foundation going. I'm Kevin Brock. I'm a full-time river fishing guide. I fish 12 months out of the year, starting from January through March. I guide on the Smith River for giant wild steelhead. April and May, we fly fish and spin fish for the, the wild rainbow trout. We catch anywhere from 30 to 50 wild trout a day, so it's fantastic fishing over there. From June, we fly fish for shad. Uh, from July all the way through October, we fish for salmon on the Feather River, Sacramento River, and American River. Um, from November through December, we fly fish and spin fish for the steelhead on the Feather River uh, out of the Orville area, and then the whole season starts again. We're fully insured, fully commercially licensed, uh, fish and game licensed, and uh, anytime, day or night, uh, at 1-800-995-5543. And if you want to look us up on the World Wide Web, you can visit us at fishkevinbrock.com. We'll have weekly reports. You'll see what we do through the whole year. Hi, welcome. I'm your host, Fred Beliba. Today we'll be doing some black bass fishing at uh, Comanche Lake, which is east of 99, uh, uh, east of Lodi and Ione. Uh, today I have as my special guest a uh, resident professional bass fisherman. I know he's going to uh, not say he is, but uh, he's a resident of the lake here and he does quite a lot of bass fishing. He's uh, agreed to take me out today and show you a way to bass fish with spinning gear. Now, it's hard to find a bass fisherman that will fish with spinning gear, and uh, Troy is one of them, and I'm glad to have him on today's show. Troy, nice to have you on the show. Pleased to meet you, Fred. Uh, t t give a little uh, uh, location where we're at. We're on Lake Comanche, and I know that the lake is very big. There's a north and a south shore, but where are you going to take us today? Well, normally I would take you out in the uh, main body, but as you see, we've got a pretty good breeze and fishing with uh, spinning tackle, uh, such as split shotting, very light lead head, open face, uh, uh, fishing with uh, green weenies, mm -hmm. uh, salt and pepper, worms and grubs. And uh, therefore, we're going to have to find a little quieter water to get what you want in this, uh, uh, in this condition. enjoyable field mm -hmm. of uh, light tackle bass fishing. But with any luck uh, at all today, we're going to uh, uh, probably run into some two, three pound uh, spotted bass. That's going to be, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, I think, the most active uh, because we're going to fish all in the neighborhood of 8 to 12 feet. Mm -hmm. And it seems, though, in the last few days of pattern, uh, th that's where these spots are. Large mouth are up tighter. Uh, we would have to fight off a lot of little shaker fish. Now, the spotted bass, is that uh, a smallmouth bass or... Is, is when, like you said, uh, you define sm uh, spotted bass as different than largemouth bass. Well, it's a strain of, of, of bass, and the one that's here is uh, Alabama spots. Mm -hmm. And w is there any preference to time of year uh, on this lake here that you would be coming for this species, and, and 
or you're just going to fish, we're going to fish for, for bass and whatever comes up, comes up. But I mean, is there a certain time of the year that you can, you can say is best to do uh, uh, either one? No, your spotted bass and largemouth are, are, are going to be together, but uh, right now we're uh, just coming out of a, a pre-spawn uh, pattern, so uh, naturally the spots are going to spawn a little ahead of the largemouth. Mm -hmm. And also the uh, spots will spawn deeper than mm -hmm. a largemouth. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll spawn, uh, I've heard, that down to 20 feet. Mm -hmm. And what times of the years will you be going for for your black bass or your spotted bass? Well, re really no different than any other time. Uh, you take your smallmouth, your spots, uh, and your native largemouth. Uh, uh, the largemouth is going to be, in the warmer weather, is going to be a little tighter. What we call tighter is up next to the bank, uh, mainly in the spring. Mm -hmm. But uh, your, your smallmouth is a a little colder natured fish mm -hmm. and then comes your spots uh, so they're not going to be they're going to be together but not uh, uh, as a group mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll go to getting spots now I think today if we catch uh, <laughs> if we're lucky and and get uh, a limit or two of bass uh, they're going to be mostly spots uh, what would you be looking for for the ideal place if you aren't familiar with this lake? Uh, will you, there's not a lot of structure uh, uh, as to, uh, you know, boat docks and, and so on. It's all open water, uh, cliffs and rocks. What would you be looking for? What would be the main objective you're coming on the lake to look for? Well, we're still, still going to look for structure and cover, uh, but... Uh, you're looking for drop-offs? You yeah, this, this lake is, is not like, uh, you're mentioning docks. Uh, uh, Clear Lake is a, an example right. of where uh, uh, the fish hang around the uh, pilings and the, and, the, and the docks. Mm -hmm. uh, there is more structure in Lake Comanche uh, as a whole than almost any lake I know of, mm -hmm. mainly in the uh, Motherlode country. Mm -hmm. uh, after the uh, two or three years of drought, we've got uh, just all kinds of uh, new growth, which is cottonwood and uh, a strong-looking weed. I don't know the name of it, but uh, you know, we're, we're going to have... We, it's all underground, underwater then? Oh, yes. All uh -huh. underwater bush. Uh -huh. Now, while we're sitting right here, for instance, in the delta, the, underwater, this is a similar to a berm, we'll mm -hmm. say. It's underwater. There's a, an old snag s sticking up there. Right. Top, a, top end of a tree, looks like. But it tops out at about 8 feet and drops off uh, from 8 to 12 feet in there. Uh -huh. And I, I, Do you have I would almost bet that uh, when we start fishing that, and by knowing that piece of, of uh, structure, mm -hmm. under, Underneath. Now you're talking about that just that 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 single tree limb sticking up right there. Is that a down tree or is that the top end of a tree? No, that that's the top end of a, a, a an old tree there, small tree. Uh -huh. But underneath is a stump or two, and the reason I say like a berm, it it's a uh, it's just a piled up about 40 feet long, and it drops off on both sides. Mm -hmm and uh, it's close enough to shore that uh, the spots. Uh, this time of year, not likely you'd find a native largemouth there, mm -hmm. but you'll find a spot or a smallmouth there. Okay, well, you got me, you got me enthused. Shall we do it? I think we and should. We, when we pick up the, the gear, we'll show you uh, exactly the uh, hookup that Troy has us hooked up on and what we're using, and of course we're going to demonstrate you on, on uh, how to use this equipment. So let's get going. Okay. Have you, have you done split shotting before? Uh, no. So uh, you're okay. going to be my teacher. This yes. one here is the ultralight, and I have a six pound test on this one too. And it is a smaller rod. It's probably going to really uh, feel like i got a whale here. Now this has the sliding. That is uh, got a, a, the sliding a bullet weight. Bullet, bullet head weight. Uh, with a stop, and we call that split shot. Okay, so 
you have the split shop uh, about, uh, what, 10 inches away from the actual hook. Yeah, 10 to 14 inches is good. And there. this is a slider, and it will stop when it hits that BB shot. Uh -huh. And that's what you call this rig. Now, the type of hook I have here is just a regular hook mm -hmm. with no, no head on it at all, yeah, with the no. worm attached okay. to the eye. Yeah, we'll put we'll put this worm in here. Okay, so and you're going to have is a regular hookup, as though it was a Texas rig, except he's right. using a split shot. Setup. Right. And then what you did was you just kind of made it kind of weedless with the hook attached to the worm. That's right. And this is what type of worm are we using here? That's a salt and pepper uh, with a chartreuse tail, which the last oh three years I know of there's been one of the top baits. Okay. In this lake. Let's do it then. And you're going to be hooked up the same way. I, I'm going to be hooked here. up the same way. And uh, what I want you to do is we use the uh, cast out, and pick up the slack, and feel it, and okay, well, absolutely slow, what slow, is the slow. Procedure? Okay. Um, just let it hit the bottom. You and let, it hit, you let it hit the bottom. And uh, just try to keep a tight line and feel the least bit of uh, tug on it. Now what you do is let it go down and let it hit the bottom and just slowly retrieve it to you. Very, very slow. Okay. So what you're doing is you're trying to represent the crawler on the bottom, uh -huh. moving on the bottom of, of the, uh, the water, the lake. Right. See that berm, as I tell you? Now, these spotted bass, they they run in the same same range as your black bass, or are they smaller, or...? Oh, no, they... they you, you get a, a, a limit uh, keeper bass, uh, they're going to run two to three pounds. The spotted is? Spots right now. And There's the larger ones. Uh -huh. uh, the now the limit on the spotted, of course, all bass is five. Is five. And the minimum in size? Is 12 inches. 12 inches. I know that you have a lot of experience fishing here, Troy, but uh, one thing I would like to, to get across, why uh, are we using the plastics over the spinners or any other type of lure right now? Is there is there a reason for it, or, or is this a, the dominant type of fishing that you would do here? With the plastics, plastic worms. Well, I'm going. I'm going to bottom fish whenever I can, and and have success with it. Mm -hmm. Now your 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 plastic worms and grubs. They they're they're the top bait, okay. along with uh, you know jig and pig and, mm -hmm. and what have you. So when you come out, your first thing should be using the plastics. Uh, for your first first hour or so uh, of trying and see if it works. Well, I use I use this all day because we we you know it's been so successful with uh, with these worms not only on Comanche but all over. Uh -huh. uh, you, you pick up uh, a paper and and about all you hear is green weenie, salt pepper worms and grubs. Right. And uh, it's a good bait. Now, are these fish temperament? Are they are they conditioned to water temperature? Summertime, it gets really hot in this area. Uh, will you will you recommend coming out doing some bass fishing at that time of the year? And if so, using what? What would be the uh, the way to go on that during the summertime? Well, that's why you got to uh, uh, stay on your toes. You got to know uh, when they're hitting jig and pig. Normally, you'll fish a jig and pig when. Uh, uh, the fish go deeper, mm -hmm. the weather gets warmer, and uh, I, 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 I will fish jig uh, more in the summertime than I will, you know, uh -huh. uh, in the spring. Uh -huh. The fish are shallower, they're more active. They want a light, you know, light bait. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so tough to fish uh, uh, a split shot and set up uh, when it's windy. Mm -hmm. 
I don't like to use too heavy a weight on there because uh, At this time, I would like to thank today's sponsors, and they are Fred's Lawn and Garden Service at 791-9025. Yeah, they can call me anytime at 800-995-5543, or visit us on the World Wide Web at fishkevinrock.com. Please call 1AA Win-Win Opportunities at 510-794-1430. Your donation is really needed to keep this foundation going. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Oh, it's a little... You got one, too? It's a crappie. We got a double here. I got one on my side. You need some help with yours? Uh, no. You a small one? We're in a school crappie here. That's a nice size crappie. Now, there's no limit on crappie, right, Troy? No, there isn't. No limit. No limit. And this is pretty good size. That That's a nice size crappie, but you know, our, our crappie's been averaging 10 to 13 inches this year. Really? Nice, real nice crappie. Mm. Now, that this one is, well, my hand is 8, 9 inches, so you can see he's, yeah, uh, he's a good 10-incher. Yeah, that's a good 10-inch crappie. Well, we're going to turn him loose. Nice fish. Excellent. And I was using the green, the uh, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. All right. Now the crappie, do you do they always hit what we're using for bass? I mean, you will catch a, a mixed stringer. Well, usually, uh, if a dedicated bass fisherman will say he enjoys catching crappie, but he'll go out with a bass bait like we're using right now, and he'll catch, uh, you know, catch a lot of crappie mm -hmm. more than he can use. Mm-hmm. And in the, in the meantime, he's uh, going ahead and doing what he wants to do, fish for bass. Right. If he gets a crappie, well, he gets a crappie. I'm going to bring mine in and help you with the net. Fish on. All right. You think this is the one that got away on me? <laughs> he doesn't want to come up, does he? Is that a true bass? Ready? Yeah, yeah I'm, I got him. Fuck. Got him. Nice fish. Nice fish. Troy, nice fish. Absolutely. The crappie were nothing. This is what we're going for. Do you see how tough those spots are? Yes. It's about two and a half pound fish. That sure is. Nice fish. Now, what distinguishes this fish? Of course, it's a different color than your than your black bass, but... Yeah, you see, this, this fish here doesn't have much of a pattern. Uh -huh. Until I find out more, I believe this is a cross between a spot and a smallmouth. Okay. See, because you very faintly see this. Right. But I have tried to find out, will they cross? And uh, I haven't had a you know straight answer. Uh-huh. But in the meantime, I'm going to call this one a cross. Now, you uh -huh. get a true spot, and he is beautiful. He's dark. Uh-huh. The pattern is real dark. Now, this is average? Pound and a half, two uh, pounds? Well, on a, a Spot. An average fish limit, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to catch some nicer. All right. Let's see what you're using. Now, you're using um, green, weenie. green weenie with the sliding sinker set up with the with the spot. That's a split shot. Split shot stop. Mm -hmm. So this is the same rig I'm using, except you're using the green weenie. Uh-huh. Okay. Nice fish. Excellent. Where do you hold your classes? Uh, at the Fremont Unified School District, we have about five high schools, but uh, only one adult school. And so, yeah, and so um, 
I teach at one school, and uh, of course it's open to everybody. You don't have to be from that one city to go. Well, do you sign people up? Yeah, they. The school district uh, signs, takes the registration and the, the money they charge pull down and get the net for you. He's a nice spot. Fish on. Nice spot. All right. All Go right. On. There he is, nice fish. That's a true spot. See how pretty he is? Nice, all right. Nice bass. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Well, that's two up, huh? I got two crappie and you caught two bass. Beautiful fish. Now this one is more true Yes, uh-huh. You see the distinct uh, uh -huh. pattern here? Right. The turn and around here. The difference uh, in a large mouth in a spot and a small mouth. This part of the jaw on a small mouth is in front of the eye. This is about even. Uh -huh. And then a native large mouth is back, behind. So the That's hinge the of the mouth is all is behind the eye. The mouth, hinge of the on mouth a large is over mouth. here. On right. a large mouth. Right. And they're just about even on this, and mm -hmm. the small mouth is forward forward of the eye. Nice fish. What would you say? Pound, pound and a half? Yeah, you go two pounds. Two pounds? All right. Nice fish. And you cut them on the... Green weenie. Green weenie. All right. Nice fish. Here, Troy. All right. Come on around this side. Uh, Be right with you. He's right behind the back of the boat. Fish on, right here. Another crappie. That's a nice crappie. I don't know how I got him here. There we go. Don't jump, whatever you do. Nice crappie. That's around 10. 7 and 11 inches, huh? Nice size crappie. You know what, Troy? Uh, it's getting a little hit, a little hot here. It's getting uh, high noon. I think I'm going to uh, take my uh, my jacket off. What do you say? Well, I'm gonna. I'm ready to take mine off. Okay. Okay. I'm going to unhook him and turn him loose. And uh, I'm going to take my jacket. Off. Nice fish. Nice crappie. Fish on. Fred, that's what you were looking for. I hope so. That's what you were looking for, Fred. Fish on. This is a nice... This one's not a crappie. He isn't coming in. I think I just, uh... Just broke that streak. Don't mess with that drag. <laughs> I bring him right on over this way. He still doesn't want to come up. Brad, the back of the boat. Okay, he'll come around. Okay, I got him. No, no, he's going to surface. He's going to surface. He's going to break water. Hold your rod chip down. He's going to break water. No, he went back down. Is he behind the boat? Yeah, that's okay. He's right behind the boat. It's okay. No, don't touch the line. Why don't you walk back that yeah. way and bring it around? He's under the motor now, and he's going to let him go out. Now, come on this side, Fred. We're on your opposite side now. Boy. You got a nice bass. Yes, sure do. Sure do. This is a good, good fight here. Here he comes. He wants to come to the top. I'm going to bring him in. Fred, I think you've got a catfish. You think I do? 
<laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> that looked like a good jump to me. Yeah, just kind of rod tip over here a little bit. Don't rush him. Don't rush yeah. him. We're okay. Hold it right tip over here, don't let him go back around him. Easy, he's coming close now. Hey, he's taking line, he's going down. He's going down, he's got some depth to me now. Here he comes, okay. See if I can bring him right up. We've seen him. It's a nice fish. We'll get him this time if you'll just be easy with him. There you go. All right. Is that what we've been looking for today? Yeah, that's about a three pounder or more. Troy, is that what we've been looking for? That's a smallmouth. That's a smallmouth. That's a smallmouth. Well, on six pound test and ultralight gear, that's not too bad, huh? No. That's a smallmouth. That's around, uh... That's two and a half, three pounds. Two pounds? Three pounds? Close to three. The bath. Fish on. All right. He's um, a nice fish. What are you using? Did you turn, did you change to... No, I'm still got the green weenie the on. The green weenie on, okay. And I'm using the salt and pepper, so they're hitting both. Oh, sorry about that. I should have had him right there. All right. About a pound and a half spot. Fish on here. All right. All right. Feel like a nice fish? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a nice fish. Got him. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, it sure is. Another spot. Another spot. Sure, I get him on the bottom lip there. There we go. Pull him right out of the edge there of that island, huh? Those spots are pretty, aren't they? They sure are. That's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. That's around uh, 15. Yeah, about 15 inches. 15 inches. All right. Well. I think we've had a real good day of fishing. We'll put him back in there. All right. Troy, I think we had a good day. Well, I think we had a nice day. So that just shows to show you in today's program, the last 30 minutes, that you can actually adapt your spinning outfits to do some bass fishing. Uh, like I mentioned again, we're on uh, Comanche Lake, and we're going for spotted bass, and it turned out we caught a couple uh, good-sized crappie. Uh, we turned them all loose so that we can save them for the next time we come out. And again, I'd like to try, like thank Troy for, for coming out, showing us some great techniques, a great day of fishing. And I'd like for you to come out at Lake Comanche and try these techniques and do some bass fishing. Until next time, this is Fred Beliba wishing you good luck and good fishing to you. Please call one AAA win-win opportunities at... 510-794-1430. Your donation is really needed to keep this foundation going. Here's Bowman Garden Service at 791-9025. Kevin Brock, full-time fishing guide at 1-800-995-5543 or fishkevinbrock.com. Nice crappie. That's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. Me. That's a smallmouth. Uh, that's two and a half, three pounds. Two pounds, three pounds. Close to three. 